Happy Friday. Yay, it's the weekend. Can't wait. I have nothing particularly planned, but I just really love weekends. I love that I don't have to get my kids in bed on this at a certain time. I love that we don't have to deal with homework. Um, I feel like I try not to be productive at all. I, I do love work, but I don't have to work. Um, your weekends are great. I really do enjoy them. Um, especially, especially being recovered because I actually used to absolutely hate the weekends. I used to hate the weekends because they threw me off schedule. I hated them for a lot of reasons. My husband was home on the weekends and so I couldn't do my sneaky little crap, right? It was harder for me to justify being at the gym for as many hours as I would spend at the gym when he was home on the weekend. Whereas when he was at work and the kids were at school, you know, it wasn't, wasn't as big of a deal. Or, you know, if I was taking them to childcare, my husband didn't see how long that they were there in childcare because he was at work. So I started to feel a little threatened having him around, which is so sad thinking about it now. Cause I'm like, gosh, I, if he could be home all the time, that'd be wonderful. Um, uh, weekends also, we typically will eat out, um, go out as a family, go on dates. Um, everything about life is just better when you don't have any disorder in your head anymore. And so with the come with the weekend coming up, I just had that thought of like, as I'm saying how much I love weekends, I forgot actually how much I really genuinely dreaded weekends when I was sick. Not the topic of my, of my um, excuse me, video today though. I wanna talk about how recovery is uncomfortable. Shocker, right? <laughs> it is, I didn't know that, just kidding. Yes, recovery is uncomfortable, mentally and physically. Physically, it's uncomfortable because you are tapping out, at least if you're doing recovery, you know, the right way, you are pushing and, and um, I guess forcing sometimes it'll feel like food in. More food than feels comfortable physically. I would eat and eat and eat and eat because my mental hunger was asking me to when I was so incredibly full. When food felt like it was like, like gonna choke me because it just had nowhere else to go. And my stomach would look like I was nine months pregnant, you know, at the end of every day. Um, I felt really swollen and I felt really puffy and I couldn't get any rings on and obviously I was out growing clothes and people would say things that would derail me and make me feel like, oh my gosh, I can't do this anymore. Someone just called me healthy or, oh my gosh, I can't do this anymore because everybody is going to think I'm, you know, letting go and just don't care about my life anymore. Um, I had so many worries about my body changing that felt really also like not just physically uncomfortable, but mentally just excruciating. Um, having to fight the eating disorder voice all day, every day is exhausting. It's like a mental marathon. I had to kind of change the way that I looked at recovery though. And I had to look at it as like more than focusing on the body changes. I need to focus on strengthening my mental muscles. So I looked at it as like, you know, if, if you have trained for something before, um, if you have an exercise compulsion, you likely have, um, you've got to train your muscles, right? To be able to do whatever it is that you're trying to do. And I felt like, Kate, hey, muscles are gonna take a break now, body's gonna be sedentary, and I am going to work on my mental endurance, my mental strength. Because I felt like before I started recovery, I was really mentally weak. I did not like distress. I didn't like feeling uncomfortable. I didn't like feeling anything really. Um, and so as I entered recovery, I started realizing this is mentally the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. This is the hardest and most exhausting thing I've ever done in my life. It felt really uncomfortable. Probably more uncomfortable than the physical part for me was the mental part and the emotional part. And so I'll talk with clients and they'll tell me how, you know, um, call it complaining or call it venting, whatever you want, but they'll tell me how uncomfortable they are in their body and how physically painful this is and how, you know, they're crying all the time or they're, you know, having freakouts or they just mentally, they don't feel, they feel depressed. They feel anxious. They feel uncomfortable. And so therefore they're thinking they're doing something wrong. Therefore recovery may not work for them or this couldn't possibly be a way to recover because it just feels so wrong. And I, I use an analogy and I, I use an analogy with people with cancer a lot because there really are so many that you can use. But in this case, it's like someone was diagnosed with cancer and the only treatment was chemotherapy and you wanted to live, you do chemotherapy. And so 
as you go through chemotherapy, you get really, really, really sick, right? Really sick, awful, nauseous, no energy, lethargic, start feeling very depressed. It's not ideal. It's not ideal at all. But does that mean that chemotherapy is not the answer to cure cancer? No, of course not. Of course, doing that chemotherapy is going to help you to be able to, you know, um, recover from or heal your cancer. And so I look at it the same way and it's not ideal. Again, it's not ideal. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And I look at it the same way as when you're in recovery. Is it ideal to have to eat so much food that you feel like you're going to pop? Is it ideal to eat so much food that you feel like you've put yourself into a food coma and you can't move off the couch? Is it ideal to feel so incredibly um, mentally um, stretched to the point where you feel like you can't function, you can't carry on a conversation, where you feel like your brain's going to explode because it's so stressed out? Of course it's not. But is that how you rewire? Is that how you rehabilitate? Yeah, it is. That's how you recover. So if you're here listening to this video and you're thinking, yeah, recovery is kind of uncomfortable. Yes, it is. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. In fact, if you listen to people's stories of people who did fully recover, listen carefully to how they explain what their experience was like. Again, people that you know, not people on Instagram that, you know, you think maybe they are, they said they were. People that you really know, they're fully recovered. Listen to how they explain what recovery felt like. And if you're experiencing all of those things, it's likely that you're probably doing recovery. It's likely that you're making the changes. You may not be perfect, but you're making those changes that you need to in order to be able to rewire your brain. So don't let that eating disorder come in and take those wins away from you or make you feel like you're doing something wrong. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye.